Hello, uh, welcome back to a, another video today, and today we're going to be looking at magma volcanoes, uh, or rather a way of handling the uh, heat and debris, or energy rather, uh, from a magma volcano. So I've been doing a bit of tinkering recently, there's been a lot of people playing about with um, how to handle the materials, how to get the most from your magma, regolith boilers, all these things. The people have been playing about with this stuff for ages, myself included. Um, but this is a new build today, this is something I'm quite proud of, and it is this little fella. Uh, this is the magical module magma maker fire module. Um, what this basically is, is a way of handling a hot uh, igneous rock. So for those of you that might be unaware, or as a, a bit of an introduction to the build, um, the whole build is, is built around the premise that magma, when it cools to 1409 degrees, 1410 pretty much, uh, will ideally turn into igneous rock um, debris, which is these little piles on the ground. Um, providing the magma flow is small enough. So if we had full tiles of magma and we cooled it pretty quickly, we'd end up with solid tiles of igneous rock forming, which are fine, you can get some energy from them, but the problem is they end up clogging up your build. So a really simple way to handle your magma is to build something like this, and this is the first step in the build. So we've got a big old pool of magma, as if it's, you know, pulled up from our volcano. Uh, we've got a couple of mesh tiles, these are really important. And then we've got a couple of doors. And the idea is that the uh, hydro sensor over here is controlling the flow of magma. And I'll show you the automation now. Um, the hydro sensor is basically looking for uh, anything above zero. If it's above zero, so it's detected some magma, it will then emit a green signal to this um, knock gate, which then goes to a filter gate. And the filter gate is what controls how long we've got to handle this material, which I'll get onto in a second. So currently my filter gate is set to 70 seconds. Um, after that, it will shut these doors, and then it will shut this door, because there's a buffer here, and then it will shut this door. So it shuts this one, shuts this one, shuts this one. Now, if any debris happens to form here, whether it's when you're first setting up the build, when your doors are still cold and some of your magma is, you know, solidified down here, uh, these mesh tiles stop it from being dumped back into here. It can only be uh, moved this way. So, you basically watch this happen now. The doors will close and then the magma will flow into the room. Okay. Now, some of these bits will still be left over, uh, but realistically if there is just a tiny bit left it'll just get melted down back into magma it's not really a big deal but it's given us plenty of time to collect um, our hot material which is what this sweeper arm is doing here now the magma itself is being passed over some tiles and i'll just explain this part of the build first the magma hits this hydro sensor which underneath it, it's got some metal tiles made of steel and some window tiles made of diamond and this is where the magma is being cooled off we want it to to cool down or rather we want to collect some of that heat, send it somewhere else, i.e. a steam turbine, and then when the magma solidified, we can pick it up and use it for something else. Because this hot debris still has lots of energy in it, and we can do lots of stuff with it, and that's what this module build is all about. Depending on what you want to do, this will kind of sort you out. So, once we've got our hot material um, being collected by this sweeper here, this sweeper is just being corner cooled because there's a little bit of liquid on the floor. This sweeper collects the igneous rock, puts it into this loader, which is an inverted loader, so it's floating, um, and basically moves the debris down the line. Now, I'll explain this shut off in a minute. We'll not look at that for a moment. Um, but that then dumps it on top of a mesh tile. The mesh tile is there. We're working within a vacuum here. The mesh tile is there so that the igneous rock can just sit on this mesh tile and not transfer any temperature. It will just sit there until we need it. Okay, and that brings us to this point in the build. So I'll explain this up here now. So what we basically have is a, an, an auto sweeper that can reach this conveyor chute. It can't reach this one over here because we've got a little tile in place. And the little tile is in place so that we can cool the sweeper down with some, um, any liquid really. I've used naphtha in this because it's quite stable. But you could just use water, petroleum, anything that can take a bit of heat before boiling off ideally. So something with a decent temperature range. Um... This sweeper will then collect up our igneous rock and put it into this loader, okay? The loader then loads it onto the belt via this bridge, okay? And then here we have a loop 
behind some diamond tiles. Um, and this is going to be our heat exchange. This is where we're going to boil off our oil or boil off some water into steam or whatever we want to do. Um, the conveyor rails basically cycle through here and in the middle we've got a little thermo sensor. With this thermo sensor there's a temp shift plate and some hydrogen and that gives us our regulator for the temperature. So there's no sensor in the game at the moment to detect what temperature something is on a rail which is kind of lame because we've got these shutoffs now that can you know be toggled with automation to dump stuff off a rail but we don't have any means of getting the temperature so this is how i've worked around it so this uh thermo sensor basically goes to a filter gate and providing it's a fixed temperature for however long you want i think i've used two seconds down here all right full disclosure i am sorry the video is so so fucked up it's it's very early in the morning and i don't want to record it again so if you can just if you can just let me off this once, all right? It was very juddery. I didn't realize when I was recording. I've been up all night, all right? I'm trying to put this video on YouTube. I'm really, really tired. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it again. I'm sorry. Five seconds. Yeah, five seconds, whatever. Um, as long as it stays at that temperature for five seconds, it'll output a green signal, which then dumps our debris off the rail. The reason that's important is if you wanted to boil... Um, let's say you wanted to make some uh, petroleum so i've done petroleum in this middle tank here this is just three modules back to back so i keep saying the word module because it's just that you can just paste them one after another so here's one module here's the second one and here's the third one this one's making petroleum from oil this one is boiling petroleum into sour gas to make liquid methane this one is just making steam so you can do whatever you want with this basically you can you can daisy chain it or just do a massive steam build or whatever you want to do but this is the idea of it um from here it would get dumped out of this shut off line so we might be able to watch this happen now um this one is currently set to below 700 degrees so if you look the temperature is falling on the igneous rock when it gets below 700 degrees it will actually output and it will output down this line here now it's a little bit complicated to see what i've got going on here um, because of this little line which I'll show you in a second but what we basically have is a drop off again to another chute now this sweeper arm can't reach this chute which again is very important um, because we don't want this sweeper arm to be picking up this debris and trying to recycle it we want this sweeper arm to only be using the debris that we've sent it okay this material doesn't need to be as hot because we're only boiling oil into petroleum so oil boils to petroleum at like 400 degrees so we don't need 1500 degree igneous for this we can just use the cooler stuff that's already served a purpose elsewhere the whole point of this is trying to reuse our materials and get as much out of our energy as possible all right so what will happen then is the materials from this build will drop down into this chute where this sweeper picks it up puts it in the loader loads it in the system and around and around it goes this system here does the same thing. Once this goes below 450 degrees, which, as I say, is a great temperature for boiling oil to petroleum, uh, it then drops out of this chute where we can use it for boiling some steam. Uh, once it's been used for steam, it can then be used for, you know, going to your slickster room. I'm currently running it through a turbine down here. Um, so, realistically, it, it's just a nice way of handling your materials till it gets to the right temperature. Um, I've done a bit of a, a showcase up here just to show some of the different applications. You know, I've squeezed quite a lot in a small space here. This realistically isn't the build. The build is this. So you could build something like this in your own base very simply. I'm actually using, um, I've got some crude oil over here, 96 degrees. I'm boiling that into petroleum. Um, my crude oil is basically coming into a little reservoir down here, going through a sour gas build to preheat it a little bit to 100 degrees and then being boiled into petroleum. Uh, over here, I'm boiling off a little bit of petroleum to sour gas. Uh, so you'll see in a moment the doors will close, transfer some heat from here, boil off the petroleum, petroleum turns to sour gas, sour gas gets cooled. So these are all builds that I've shown before. These are, you know, sour gas boilers. I've done many of these on my YouTube before. And if you go back and check at some of the other videos, you can see we've, we've done things like this before. But I just wanted to show you some of the applications, basically. So um, it, it's worth noting. I mean, you can do an awful lot with, with this debris. A lot of people sort of get it, use it for a little while, and then feed it to hatches or something. But there's a lot of energy in this stuff, an awful lot of energy in this rock um, and magma itself. So you can do a lot with it. Uh, at the end of the cycle, we end up with igneous here coming in at about 200 degrees. Um, we'll see what this stuff is actually coming out here. 
Uh, this is coming out at 188 degrees. So that has boiled us some petroleum. Oh, I've overloaded the wire over here. We've uh, we've boiled some petroleum. Um, we've cooked some oil into petroleum, and we've also generated some steam with this turbine over here. So you can do an awful lot with it. So the main main idea here was to show you just how much resource you can get, and we've gathered an awful lot of natural gas and also an awful lot of petroleum. Uh, we've also generated some power from steam turbines or whatever you want to do with this. This is the ideal module, I reckon. So I'll attach the save file as ever. Um, if you want to have a look at any of the automation settings, pretty much everything in this build, uh, build is built out of... Oh, I see what's happened. Hold on a second. Pretty much everything in this build is built out of um, ceramic. Uh, there's a, a few pieces built with thermium where it has to be, for example, where we're building... Um, we're cooking our oil into petroleum. If you were doing an oil boiler, you'd probably need to use some thermium. But other than that, it's mostly aluminium, steel. I've tried not to use any space age materials apart from super coolant in our, um, um, you know, methane sour gas boiler. Uh, other than that, it's all buildable pre space pretty much. Um, even our sweeper arms, they're built out of steel. Um, the I should probably explain there's a lot of piping in the build that realistically you could probably do a lot tidier I've tried to squeeze in a lot of stuff in a small space here um, so as you can see we've got one aqua tuner up here that's actually cooling all of our turbines and also cooling our sweepers uh, one aqua tuner can do a load of cooling basically but this is running some cold petroleum around the back of our sweepers and our loaders um, and also keeping our turbines nice and cool so you know you just need an aqua tuner in your build somewhere to keep all your handling materials cool. I should probably mention that. Uh, but yeah, as I say, we're, we're not exactly using really hot materials. We're using oil from your oil biome. We're using water at 28 degrees just because that was the nearest water pool I, I sampled in my game. Um, and that's it, basically, guys. So all the details for the automation, again, I'll, I'll leave them on the save. Uh, you can have a play with the, play about the build. Again, this isn't a, a build showing how to make a sour gas boiler or how to boil petroleum or how to make steam. This is just showing this little handy module here. So as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope it's proved interesting in some way. Um, I've basically been up all night messing about with this thing and I'm very tired. So if I was stumbling on my words, I apologize. Um, I will be live uh, if you want to catch up with me on Twitch. I'm normally live uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday and Sunday from 4 p.m. BST. Uh, but any questions, just whack them in the uh, YouTube comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So much love as ever, guys. Take it easy. Bye-bye.